get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Live from the Sweet Snack Show Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm live at the Sweet and Snack Show. I'm here with Daniel, the founder of Upton Naturals. Daniel, first of all, I love the branding, the packaging, and kind of like the old, old style look. How did you come up with the name and, and the style of the, the branding? Thank you. Um, I knew that people like names and faces and uh, better Uptons than mine. Uh, Upton is a much better salesman than I am. Um, really, uh, we just sort of knew that Upton was going to be a unique name. There's not going to be another. It has a nicer ring to it. Upton's Naturals and instead of like Dan's, you know, like that's maybe not. Does it have a uh, doesn't ring to it? Yeah. How'd you come up with the product? Because this is, um, these are jerky bites. I, my favorite is a smoky original, um, but this is not made of meat. So talk about what this is made of and, and how you came up with the idea. It is, it is not made of meat. It's made of wheat. Um, really simple ingredients. It's basically just uh, wheat, fruit juices in some cases. Uh, we've got four different flavors and spices. Um, so we started out making a product called Seitan, which uh, is a refrigerated meat alternative. Um, that was a uh, favorite food of mine when I started the company going back uh, 13 years now. Um, and as we've evolved into different categories, um, we just thought that uh, it would be nice to, to have something that's soy-free in the meatless jerky yeah. department. Yeah. Right now, they're it's pretty the much... of a jerky. Is it very so how much did so. You get this? It seemed like that would be hard to do. Um, I wish I had a, a magic answer, but it, it's pretty much uh, just the protein of the wheat. Yeah. So um, you know, it's sort of like a protein for protein has that sort of springy chew to it. And then if you think about it in terms of flavors, um, if you were to slice off a little piece of cow, it might not taste any different than, you know, I don't know, even uh, a piece of tofu or something, but it's just how you season it. So right. you don't just, all these jerkies that you see out there, you know, they're usually smoked or seasoned in some way. So it's in many ways quite comparable. Um, so were you a vegetarian? How did you come up with this? Um, I've been a vegan for over 25 years. Why? Why? Um, primarily for animal rights, so right. that's sort of what lured me in, and then uh, it's no hard. No judgment here. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to argue the environmental and, of course, health benefits of uh, vegan diet. And in my 25 plus years, it's it's certainly come a long way, um, in terms of availability of products. Yeah. And what was it like decades ago? It was pretty rough. I mean. You, there was one health food store that was like a 25 minute drive and they they had one kind of soy milk that came in those aseptic cartons and you know it was mostly water with like a little bit of chalky soy dust at the bottom and you'd shake it up and there'd still be chunks when you pour it into your glass and um, not even really a lot of options at restaurants you could have like the veggie chili or hummus plate um, we've got we've got a restaurant as well attached to one of our factory buildings. Oh really? And uh, like it's your, it's your yeah. company's restaurant. Yeah. Oh. And we've got a Where hard ban. It? We've got a hard ban on chili for the record because of my early years. Okay. Um, it's at Grand and Hoyne right. in uh, the West Town neighborhood of Chicago. Yeah. yeah. So. So, what made you start a so the difference between being vegan and then actually starting a you know vegan food company? What made you decide to start a company out of it? Well, I knew that I wanted to do something that might allow for some activism. Food is a great way to do that. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to work for myself. Um, 
Satan that we started with was always a favorite of mine. At the time, there were no local brands and just one national brand, so kind of thought maybe that would be a good fit. Yeah. Um, I had only ever made it one time, like at home, before deciding to start a, a Satan company, and it did not go very well. Um, that should have been your first. It should have been a sign, <laughs> but uh, it, you know, it didn't stop me. So. Um, so what kind of products do you have? Talk about some of the product lines. Sure. So uh, we started out with that seitan. We've got six different flavors um, of seitan for retail and food service. Um, What's popular? popular? Most popular is probably our chorizo, which is like a sort of like a Mexican sausage. Um, we've got a bacon seitan, Italian, a traditional, which is very mild, uh, garlic, onion, soy sauce. Um, a ground, um, and then you have different flavors of the jerky bites. Yeah, we've got four different flavors of the jerky bites. Those are probably the most um, unique in terms of flavor profiles. We really wanted to try to make them as interesting as possible. Uh, the smoky original, of course, is your most basic. Um, my favorite is probably the pineapple pink peppercorn, mm. which is real nice. Uh, we've got a tarragon ginger lime and then a tamarind pepperoni. Um, going back before this, we just launched uh, four Thai meal kits um, that are shelf stable, um, ready in just a minute to. Yeah, you some interesting. You like a bacon macaroni, or we also have some some vegan mac and cheeses. Uh, those are somewhat unique in the category. Um, they're the only vegan mac, and I think maybe even the only natural one, that uh, has a pre-cooked noodle and a fluid sauce. You know, a lot of those macs have um, dry noodles and powders. Yeah. Um, so those are pretty exciting. And actually, the bacon mac we sell at the restaurant here in Chicago, it's, it's our number one selling item, which wow. is why we decided to launch it for retail. Um, so talk about where can people buy the product? Where can people get it? Well, the Jerky Bites is just launching. It'll it'll probably be in stores early fall, but the uh, the Max and the meal kits, um, the Satan, and we also haven't even talked about Jackfruit yet. Okay. Um, but that was that was probably our most exciting launch about four years ago. We were the first in the world to uh, package and market a pre-seasoned. Uh, almost ready to eat jackfruit. So I don't know. Have you had jackfruit before? No. Are, are they? What do they look like on the? Uh, so a mature. Are they, large? they are. They're yeah. actually the world's largest tree-borne fruit. Okay. So they can grow up to 80 pounds. It's rare that you see one that large, yeah. but they do sell them here locally at produce stores, and I think Jewel has them. Um, I think it was at like Stanley's. Rest in peace, and, Stanley's. Uh, and uh, um, saw one or something. Yeah, it's huge. those ones are probably between 10 and 15 pounds, if I had to guess. Yeah. So that's the mature fruit, which is sweet. It's actually said to have been the inspiration for juicy fruit gum. Mm. Um, we use the young fruit, which has a more neutral flavor, um, and it's got a texture that's similar to like a shredded, uh, like a shredded pork or mm. that kind of thing. Okay. So we have a, a barbecue and a chili lime, which are our two top flavors. So um, online, where can people get it? Uh, Whole Foods, uh, Jewel has some of our items, Mariano's, um, Fresh Time. Um, we're in a number of Target stores, Walmart, uh, a, few Kroger, a few other Kroger banners, Safeway, pretty much Amazon also? everywhere. Amazon. Amazon. All of our dry stuff is available yeah. through Amazon, so like the meal kits, the Max, and some of the jackfruit. Um, the jerky will be eventually, um, but the seitan, it, it needs to be kept refrigerated. Mm -hmm. so. so Daniel, I like to always ask um, two things. One, what's been a big challenge in the journey? Because I know starting a company and a food company, there's uh, challenges. And then what's been a proud moment for you? Sure. Uh, 
I guess in the beginning, I never really looked at anything as a challenge. I knew it was a conscious choice, like this is not going to be easy. I'm going to have to figure out all these things by myself. I don't have a food background or a business background or anything. It was more of a passion project. So I had a fairly slow growth plan, you know, sort of uh, we started with food service and then slowly branched into retail kind of region by region. Now we're in over 20 countries. Um, what do you attribute to that? Is it, were you on the phone calling? Were you just showing up at local Chicago places? How are you growing slowly early on? Uh, yeah, it was just a lot of kind of just showing up. Um, we, ha we did have a lot of help from Whole Foods locally. Uh, they were our first retailer and, and had, uh, you know, some great programs where they support their local suppliers. And, you know, if you do well in seven stores, you can get into 20 and then you can get into 40 and then um, you can kind of go region by region with them uh, throughout the rest of the country. So we would basically take it region by region with them and you know, the, we would go, when we would launch, we'd go visit every single store and try to do in-store demos and uh, participate in all the, um, like the veg fests, like consumer fairs, that sort of thing. And um, I think it's really just our passion that, you know, and our authenticity that sort of right. caught on, I guess. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, there is a certain point where you get so big that it's hard to do all those same things that you did when you started. And even in the last year, we've seen so much uh, growth. It's in terms of challenges, I would say um, employees are yeah. can, can be difficult to find. You know, we've had some challenges finding enough people to do the work that we need um, and the space itself. We've been in four buildings now. So we started out just, you know, technically five. Yeah, well, we had like a shared kitchen and we saved up, um, you know, once we were selling to a handful of restaurants to then get our own space and then outgrew that went into almost like a, I'd call it a temporary space for two years while we were building uh, the space that has our cafe attached to it. We used to do all of our production there as well. And I'd say we had kind of like a five year plan that that building is just under 10,000 square feet of which 3,600 maybe is production space. And we're like, okay, it'll be maybe five years and we'll start to look in the neighborhood at some other places that we can move production to or different lines. And sure enough, in like two and a half years, it was wall to wall and people were wow. trying to work to get things That's done. Amazing. It was pretty wild. So now um, we're in... That's a pain to move. It is. I mean, you have all this equipment. Yeah. I, I'm I'm getting an ulcer thinking about it. Yeah. It, uh, like, oh, forget it. Just cram more people in there. You know, it's hard to say no. Once things are going, you know, you can't just tell Walmart, like, uh, or the distributor, really. You can't say, don't sell to Walmart or don't sell to these stores. You just got to keep growing. Uh, you just got to keep yeah. going. And it, it helps keep things interesting, too, you know, challenging but interesting. Um, right now, we're in 42,000 square feet, so we made a really wow. huge jump. In terms of production space, it was more than 10 times the size. We're filling that up fairly quickly, but we also have some additional space to grow on the property. Wow. Um, That's amazing. What's been a proud moment for you? Proudest moment, I would say, would be launching that jackfruit. Mm. We worked really hard on that, um, finding a supplier. Um, when we launched it, before that, you could only buy it um, in a 20-ounce can, usually at like an Asian specialty food store. Right. Most of those cans are loaded with sodium and have preservatives, and then you take it home and you're still cooking something for an hour to three hours. And I must have called every single company that had a can on a shelf saying, please, I really want to buy this from you in, in bulk because I want to I want to season it, I want to do this thing. And most people either didn't reply or I had people laugh at me, Why? like, just because they're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Americans don't want that much jackfruit. Like, that's, that's crazy. We're not interested. 
So it essentially took me getting on a plane and traveling all over Southeast Asia to try to find the right partner mm. or partners really to, to source and do the production and, and figure out how to make it happen. You were um, determined to get that jackfruit. Quite, quite determined, yeah. And since then, um, I've seen some of those bigger companies with the cans at different trade shows and um, did my best to pretty woman them. If you've seen the scene yeah, where so. they, you know, big mistake, big mistake, <laughs> but they uh, they still can't really be bothered, you know, like. They're lost, right? They're, they're lost, yeah. but um, that was really, that was an exciting time yeah. to, to see that. Well, check out Upton Naturals, the Jerky Bites, all the other products they have. What's the website we could point people towards? Uh, it's just UptonsNaturals.com. UptonsNaturals.com. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.